This might just be my favorite thing about being a pen tester. So let's solve that age old problem. How do you gain experience without having experience? If you continue to believe that you need experience to gain experience in this field, then that will actually be your reality. You know, most people, the reason they sit on the sidelines is actually not because they're lazy. Rather, they're simply intimidated by the vast amount of stuff that you need to know. It gets overwhelming. And when it seems like there's such a tall order of things that you need to do, it's way easier to procrastinate and not take the first step. Now, here's the thing. Once you do follow through on the advice that I'm about to give you in this video, eventually you will become job ready and it'll be time to start applying. And once you're there, you will need to gain that interviewing skill because that can be a skill all on its own. And most certainly you're going to want to arm yourself with the top 10 cybersecurity pen testing interview questions that you need to know to ace that interview. I have that right down in the description below, absolutely for free, so check that out. Now for sure, before you get into this field, you need some form of experience. But the thing is you do not need an actual job to gain that experience. And the inverse could also be true, right? You could have that job and not be gaining the experience that you need to really level up as well. So for example, I, you know, my first job, I, I worked with this coworker that, you know, they were very eager to learn, but they, they were overwhelmed by the vast amount of stuff here. Because even when you get that first job, <clears throat> there's still that sheer feeling of, wow, there's a lot that I need to learn even from where I'm at right now. I feel like I know nothing. You know, some people might have that experience. I think a lot of people do. Even I've seen people that are super advanced that still feel that way, right? But this person they would actually watch a lot of videos and read a lot of books, you know, about hacking and, and pen testing, different stuff like that. And actually they even had a master's degree. They went as far as to even go and get a master's degree in cybersecurity. Now, here's the thing. That person is still working in that same job, making about $80,000 a year, even though I think they have about, they have more more years of experience than me. They have about eight years, seven, eight years of experience in the in the field, like in the in that job. They've been working for the same company and never never really moved on from there. And so, yeah, keep in mind the average salary, just to give you guys the a number to kind of mentally anchor to in this field as a pen tester is about one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars a year. That's what uh, most of the statistics are saying. And, you know, over six years in the field, you definitely should not be making 80K. There's so many opportunities to make so much more than that. Um, I will say that my salary, I'm, I'm more than double that person's salary. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, well, look how great I am. But I am saying that to say that you need to gain experience in, in this field, right? And you need to, of course, you then need to use that experience to gain higher paying jobs and, and move up as you go. But... A huge part of that, a huge issue with not being able to move up is the fact that that person doesn't really have the technical skill set so much. They have the theoretical, right? They've read a lot of books. They've done a lot of courses and stuff like that, but they were afraid to actually get that hands-on experience to learn and to level up because you can learn a lot of theory that's going to help you uh, in interviews and stuff like that just by reading a book or um, watching videos, right? Maybe like videos like this, but where the actual acquisition of the skill comes into place is only in one place. And that is while you're doing it, while you have your hands on the keyboard, you're making mistakes, you're getting hands on tackling the stuff. That's why I make such a huge emphasis on that in my courses and things like that. And in the videos, I talk about the importance of being hands on with your learning. And that doesn't, the amazing thing is that does not require a job. You can do that no matter where you are right now. If you have a computer and you are watching this, maybe you're watching it on your phone, but most likely you have a laptop. I mean, I do know people in India that do all their pen testing on a mobile phone. So even that, there's like no excuse for not getting your hands dirty with this. So that's something that you can definitely do no matter where you're at. So the absolute best way to gain experience without having experience first is to do CTFs, do capture the flags, do challenges that actually replicate, you know, as, as much as possible, try to prioritize the ones that are the most real world that replicate that real world scenario. But yeah, if you're not there, you got to work your way up to, to getting there. I know a lot of you guys that watch this are 
more beginner level and stuff like that. Some of you are further along. Maybe you're pursuing your OSCP. Um, but either way, you want to work your way up to getting here if you're not here already. And for those of you that are not, this section is especially for you. How do you actually do that, right? So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make it your objective to increase your skills up to the point where you can start doing basic CTFs as soon as possible. And in order to get there, there's a number of required skills, let's say, things that you need to know in order to get there. Here's some that I listed out. You know, of course, there are, you know, more than just this, but these are the core ones that you're going to need to develop. So you're going to need to understand HTTP, the OS, you know, Windows and Linux, both, right? The command line, how do you how do you do all the stuff that you would do in a graphical interface, but from a blinking cursor right on the terminal? So you're going to need to learn that. You're going to need to learn networking as well, right? IP addresses and things like that, routing, subnetting, that kind of stuff. And at that point, I would say you're ready to get into some learning about the common web application vulnerabilities. You know, people that are in my course, we covered that pretty extensively. But that's something that, you know, even if you use another platform, like maybe try HackMe, OWASP, um, something like that, you want to start familiarizing yourself. What are the different vulnerabilities? Uh, how do they manifest? How can I exploit them, mitigate them, all that stuff? And you want to do the same thing for the network-based vulnerabilities, right? Learn about the common ports, um, the common enumeration techniques for those different ports. You know, what are the common vulnerabilities on them? How do you exploit them? How do you mitigate them? All of that stuff as well. And then from there, you know, expand on that. Learn about the most popular tools for doing all the stuff like web app pen testing and network pen testing. What are tools that people commonly use? And, you know, how, how can I best enumerate? What is enumeration, you know, to begin with? And how, how does it apply to pen testing? How does it assist us, right? Start simple. You know, you don't have to get too, uh, too crazy with this in the beginning. Just start simple and you can always increase the difficulty as you go, right? So as far as the machines you pick, pick ones that are considered really easy, right? Maybe start out. What I would recommend is start out with Try Hack Me on the easy boxes that have like more that are more guided where they kind of hold your hand and tell you each thing that you need to do and then work your way up to the, uh, you know from there to boxes that are not guided where it just says hey what's the user flag what's the root flag and then increase the difficulty from like the medium boxes hard boxes and so on eventually right and um, yeah, so if you if you do these, try to do it without guided walkthroughs. Now, with that being said, don't spend like a month on a box, right? If you you know decide how much time up front you're going to spend on the box uh, without looking anything up, and if you don't get anything, especially early on, maybe you need to watch a few walkthroughs just to gain some idea of how to even go about. Maybe you don't even know what getting a root shell means, right? You're going to need to learn that uh, first of all, right? But yeah. It's okay to look up walkthroughs sometimes, but you want to make sure that you're trying it for yourself first. Don't default to just doing that right away. That was a mistake that I made early on. I would like for you guys to avoid that uh, if possible. So ideally, you want to reach a point where you can do the challenges without having to rely on them, but sometimes you'll need to, and that's okay as well. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah. Absolutely read the write-ups after you do the challenges, though. This is a really nice hack um, because you want to learn about, you know, with these boxes, normally there's so many different ways you can do it. It's really up to the attacker and what is their methodology, what tools do they like to use, what are their techniques. And if you read about how other people solve the same machine as you, you might gain new perspectives on different tools you could use you didn't maybe know. Maybe there was an easier way to exploit the thing than what you did or an easier way to enumerate something. And reading their walkthroughs or watching their walkthrough videos after the fact can really make you that much better as a pen tester. So definitely I would recommend doing that. I think a lot of people don't do that. And you know, you should feel some level of discomfort. That's where the true growth occurs, right? You know, it might feel a bit over your head though, to be honest. In the beginning, you're not gonna know. Everything's gonna feel over your head. But if you stick with it, you'll be surprised how much of the stuff you could actually solve. Uh, but, at, you know, eventually you'll start to get a feel for what's like a little bit beyond your capabilities right now and what is difficult, but more of like a, like a stretch. All these boxes should feel like a bit of a stretch goal to solve them. Um, but it should be within your capability as well.
And then at this point, if you can do that, if it's your jam to go for certifications, go for it. Uh, you're completely ready at this point where you're able to start, if you're able to start doing some of these CTFs. But where do you go from here once you're fully up to speed with the CTFs and gaining experience, right? So at this point, you're ready for the more challenging CTFs, right? You could just keep going down the CTF rabbit hole if you want. Go to the hard and insane boxes, do time CTFs, you know, competitive ones. If if you really are into capture the flags, you can go really far down that rabbit hole. Otherwise, like I said, you're ready for certifications at this point if you want one. The offensive security certs would definitely be in your realm of capability and where I personally recommend you go next, like offensive security, uh, like OSCP or something like that. But eLearn is definitely, you know, an option as well. And, you know, there's so many other certs out there. Maybe there's another one that suits your fancy. But those would be my recommendations. And then for, if, if bug bounty, this is like an optional thing. If you're interested in bug bounty, this would be a really good time to make the leap over to working on those. And some people, a lot of people specialize in bug bounty. It's not really my thing personally, but if you wanted to get into it, this would be a great time for that and another great way to get experience without having a job, right? So don't make the mistake of trying to do all these things though. You know, you might be super ambitious. Like that was one of the hardest things for me is just, and I think for a lot of people that are, they gravitate towards this field and have that curiosity mindset is like, you want to do everything, but you have to really restrict yourself if you want to make substantial progress in any one area. So out of this list, pick one and commit to that. So what stage are you in, in the uh, whole journey of working your way up to CTFs? Perhaps you're doing them already. Let me know down in the comment section below. It's always helpful for me to know, get a better understanding of where everyone is at with this stuff. And specifically, I'd like to say that if you're interested in web app pen testing and you want to know where doing CTF fits into the overall like roadmap of the things you need to learn on your journey to be job ready, uh, check out my video, A Proven Path to Get Into Cybersecurity Pen Testing. I have that one on the screen for you right now. I'll see you right over there.